Welcome back to the GarfCast. I'm your host, Trevor C. Turvetin. With me, as always, we have Maddie B. Yo, it's Maddie B. And of course, <laughs> we also have Jacob Penske. Hello, I am so happy to be back. This is so much fun. <laughs> Dude, this oh, is yeah. so much fun. I'm so it's ready. It's the Garf cast. But of course, last but not least, we have the one, the only, Sean Lyons. Heck yeah, I'm so happy to be back. Talk about Garfield. We are recording this at 12.21 a.m. And uh, we are very excited to be here. But um, today is a very special episode. We have a very special guest. We have none other than the Samuel Ryan May <laughs> on the podcast. Dude, I am excited to be here. I've been waiting a long time. <laughs> it is a dream to have you on the podcast, Sam. You know, thank you. I've heard you're a bit of a, a bit of a movie fan. You know, I like I like some movies, yeah. and so that wouldn't be completely false. But yeah, I do like some movies. Are we by chance here to talk about some movies? We are here to talk about a movie, a very specific movie to be exact. One movie to be exact, and that movie is the direct-to-video Garfield film entitled Garfield Gets Real. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> here has seen it. <laughs> and we're ready to talk about it. <laughs> um, just for some background notice, we have tried recording this episode multiple times, and it's, it's, been, it's been rough. But we are all finally here together, and we're all ready to talk about Garfield Gets Real. This um, is pretty exciting. Let's do this. So, um... Uh, Sean, do you want to start? So, my general thoughts about Garfield Gets Real was um, I was a bit shocked (laughs) when the movie first started, to say the least, at the quality production. And then um, at the overall movie, I was actually pretty shocked. Um, The movie itself wasn't that good. But it was pretty fun to watch with all of my um, my hosts today. So you know, you first, Jacob. You know, I would. I was just want. I was just gonna say that. I mean, you could kind of compare this movie to a porno. You know, the plot. The plot kind of sucks, but it's really fun to watch with your friends. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sums it all up. Um, you know what? Well, he said it ten times better than I ever so, said. <laughs> was this anybody's first time watching Garfield Gets Real? Um, Mine. It was my first time. I think it was all of our first times. Yeah. Correct. I I have very vague vague memories. I remember seeing the artwork of like Garfield climbing out of the newspaper that's on like the you know the post the poster I guess. Um, mm-hmm. but I'm I have. I have no memories of the actual movie, but I feel like I have seen this before. In some I weird, mean, it is. It is like what thirteen years old, so you still. You definitely yeah, I was. Seen it when mm-hmm. you were a little baby. Yeah, two thousand seven was when it came out, I believe, and um. Yeah, no, I, that's. God, thirteen years. What? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, okay, Sam. What other animated movies came out in two thousand seven? I believe uh, Ratatouille came out in 2007. <laughs> we all remember Ratatouille, right? Yes. Dude, Ratatouille, my uh, second favorite Pixar movie. Dude, my favorite French Wally. rat. Is it Wally? <laughs> I can't remember. What... <laughs> I think he said it was Wally, but, you know, it doesn't matter. They're pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I just, Incredibles number one. Yeah, I'll say Wally's number two, Ratatouille's number three. All right, there. I'm setting it in stone right now. That is my top three Pixar movies. But yeah, that just gives you, you know, an, an idea of the type of films being made that year. Just just speaking of movies, uh, also animated in 2007, the B-movie uh, was ah, actually yes. 2007. A classic. 
A classic. Also Shrek the Third. <laughs> you also dare speak that name on the podcast. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But we're on this topic, so I figured I'd bring it up just just so uh, we could set the, the record straight that it's a piece of living garbage and it should never be mentioned again. So this is it. Just I mean, to, it's not uh, that bad. Where's the muffin, man? That's uh, Shrek <laughs> 2 when they meet the muffin. <laughs> Oh, my bad. That one was good. All right, Ron talk. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I took some notes during the... F- oh, wait, 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 wait. Jacob, no, wait, you already gave your opinion. Maddie B, what was your opinion about the movie? My opinion, it's a terrible movie. <laughs> but if you enjoy to uh, make fun of movies, I think it's right up your alley. Okay. Sam May, anything more you want to add? Uh, yeah, I just kind of, I don't think the movie was particularly any good, but <laughs> I think that is important to not have every piece of Garfield media to be good because then you can't really, you can't really experience good Garfield and bad, bad Garfield. And then you can't really tell what a bad Garfield looks like. And mm-hmm. if you can experience a bad Garfield and still like Garfield, that just shows how much you love Garfield. Mm-hmm. So I think it had to be bad. And, so I mean, I took some- frankly... I think it should be Garfield gets bad because it's bad, but but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Comedy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Thank you. So um, thank you. Of course, of course. So um, I took some notes during the movie, and my first note is um, it looks like ass. You know, my, I mean, I my note was it the anim- animation was odd, not quite as abrasive, but yeah, it. I couldn't tell if it was, like, the style they were going for or just bad animation. Well, you, I th- which one do you think, think the it was? reason for that mainly is because they, when it first starts, they're in the cartoon, or they're in the newspaper, so they want to make it look as cartoony as possible, Maybe. while also making it look like a complete glob of turd shit i don't know it's not the like, most appealing thing to look at so the thing that i noticed <laughs> it's one of the worst, the, dude. <laughs> anything that was a comic strip like the garfield characters or bobby bear or whatever the f-ing rabbit's name was or they looked fine mm-hmm. it was any other character model <laughs> that shows up like um that what was his name? The the guy that looked like Sean? The prop guy. It was just... The yeah, prop, prop guy, guy, he looked like the most normal dude, and <laughs> you had the most wacky, outgoing, weird-looking characters on the planet. I mean, you had oh. the scythe oh, yeah. lady that looked like a scythe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was, there was her. And she, she was married to someone that didn't have any hands, but they had fingers somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think his sleeves were really long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing I have... Thing. Which I know this was kind of intentional because they're not all from the same comics. You know, you have Garfield, you have the bear, and you have the married couple. Um, but no character models match. Like the director and the, his assistant, the um, big titty lady, is what I have her down as. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yeah, I remember her, her. She was proportionately about three feet tall, and her character model had. Uh, she was about six feet long. Yeah, yeah. From tit to ass, it was um. Actually, yeah. I should probably say tit to butt. Can I say tit? Does tit? Yeah. Need to be... um, no, 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 say, no, no. Yeah. Maybe tatas. I mean, I could say booby. <laughs> the yeah, fruit of the looms. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're gonna edit this. What do you think warrants a bleep? So, um, so usually any you... curse word. T- right. t- it's not like a... you know. Here, I'm just gonna. Like, say, um, yeah. Fuck. 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 Uh, uh, I, I'm yes, just here. Bleep definitely after sentence. bleep coming from this man's mouth. <laughs> Let's okay. change the subject. Uh, ch- change the subject. Um, <laughs> she had big boobies and a big butt. <laughs> and yeah, because it is a if, porno. If this lady existed yeah. in real life, she would um. Be very unbalanced. Scoliosis. Yeah. Yeah, scoliosis. That's rough. 
Oh yeah, I, Sam. Do you want to tell us your story? No. <laughs> I don't, I don't, Go ahead. Uh, I don't really have any connection to school yet. <laughs> well, now this conversation is just going to seem out of place. That I, you know, we mentioned scoliosis, and then I call you out about scoliosis, but then you proceed to not say anything about scoliosis. Uh, it, I mean, I might have had just a little bit of scoliosis. Just you know, a, a tad. Just a little bit. And then they're like, hey, do you want to have surgery to fix it? And I was like, all right, fine. I'll have some surgery just just for mm-hmm. and giggles, you know. Then I, mm-hmm. I missed, yeah. like, a, a month and a half of eighth grade. Uh, but I still managed to, like, still get a pretty good GPA, you know. I'm just really smart, I guess. I don't know. But uh, it, was a, it was a pretty interesting time. Um, and I just remember being in the hospital, throwing up, and uh, all the nurses saw my big ass. I felt bad for them. Sam's but I big hairy butt cheeks. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I just and they, they would like close, close my gown for me. <laughs> They'd be like, "I shall see it." <laughs> At least that's what I think. <laughs> uh, rough yeah. Never felt more helpless then. Hey, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> Can we move on to the next note, please? Okay, so my next <laughs> note is weird living things. Throughout the... I guess we should probably talk about the plot of this movie. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, what is it? I don't remember. Okay. Jacob, do you want to do the honors? Oh, <laughs> so here we go. Open to um, the comic book world. So we got you know Garfield and John and Odie living in this epic uh, mis- mishmash of comics and comic strips and cartoons. Um, it's all just uh, you know one world. But then um, after some conflict, because um, that's what movies have, they have conflict. And there was some conflict, so Garfield ends up in the real world, which is still pretty cartoonish, but uh, for this movie, it was pretty realistic. Uh, It was the real world, and then he's all up in this real world, and they're like, Garfield, why are you in the real world? And then they're like, oh man, we gotta go get him. But then, like, people, they had trouble, you know, getting Garfield back into the comic book world from the real world world but like garfield liked it in the real world because he didn't like his responsibilities in the comic book world so he was like man this is great but then he realized that um uh, his job was going to get taken in the comic book world and he didn't like that so he's like oh man this isn't isn't as good as i thought it'd be so then like they have trouble like getting him in but then eventually they like uh build a portal or something like a tunnel and then like garfield is like and then he comes back to the comic world and they're like oh yeah garfield's back and they all celebrate and then the movie's over but other than that you know, think that's, really a, that's pretty much the summarization. <laughs> it's not really like the plot. Now, now, yeah. now, the, now our viewers have no reason to go check it out themselves. Yeah, so I was going to say a good, a good summary <laughs> is there's two worlds. Comic book world, real life world. In the comic book world, Garfield has an existential crisis and travels into the real world. But... Yeah, yeah cause you, you mentioned you mentioned that there is conflict, but you didn't mention what the conflict was. The conflict is that Garfield is tired of being an entertainer and wants a break from his job, which could be relatable, which actually yeah. might ha- be something there. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess I should you know... have watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jacob, no, we're gonna see how long it took the audience to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't watch the movie, but uh, this, is, this has been a lot of fun. So you guys have at it. <laughs> um, Wait, hold up, Jacob. Don't you're not just gonna leave, are you? No, no, I'm not gonna leave. I'm just gonna let you guys talk. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you still have input from your Wikipedia article. Well, I don't have it up right now, but <laughs> oh, okay. well, whatever. Back to the notes, I guess. I have the note: weird living things. In the comic book world, a bunch of inanimate objects have faces, like a trash can or musical instruments or beds. I don't remember everything that had faces, but um, I did not like this creative decision. Yeah, no, I was very disturbed by it. Mm -hmm. Um, Like like the trash can, he loved eating trash. It made me sick a little bit. 
I ain't gonna lie. Um, another point. As they're on their way to um work, we see the piano walking by and a superhero flying by. Was there anything else epic during this scene? Um, no, I think you summed up all the epicness. Okay. Um, so I guess on to my next note. Um, concertina guy is a simp. We mentioned they're in a comic book world. That means there's comic book characters. And one of the comic strips is this couple, I believe. There's one lady who he- whose head looks like a scythe, and the other guy looks like a potato. He plays the concertino, which is a form of accordion. And um, uh. that, that was something I did. They, they kept on referring to it as a concertina and not just saying, like, oh, an accordion. So that's pretty good. Good on them. Yeah. yeah, they know they're they know they're accordions. <laughs> um, I don't, but I don't he, remember when this. Oh yeah, go ahead. The bear was doing his um fart sneeze trick, and um she was like, "Come on, does anybody remember his name?" Uh, no, <laughs> brother. I think his name was brother. I'm gonna call him Gilbert. <laughs> go okay. for good it. Call. Good call. Good well, call. Well, we did have a <laughs> character in there that did look like Gilbert. Yeah. She was like, come on, Gilbert, let's go. And he's like, yes, honey. Like, like that's their relationship. She wears the pants in the relationship. That That's, yeah. That, yeah. She, I mean, some some relationships just have to be that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's um, perfectly fine. It's about this point that Garfield has the existential crisis. And then I have the note, horny dog. And I believe this was that yellow dog. He had the hots for like a, a poodle or something. But I don't know why I put that down as a note, as if there was something there to talk about. Oh, I thought when you said horny dog, I was like, oh, when um, Odie was going after the bone the entire movie. You know, it was just extremely horny. You know what? Let's say it was that. Odie, Sean, cared. T- describe to us Odie's arc in this movie. So, Odie is, I'm going to say chaos control, or chaos, because he basically causes Garfield to go through the screen and realize that he can get to the real world and get some hot dogs. Because um, when Odie is chasing the prop bone, uh, he actually exits the screen to follow it. And then Garfield's like, wow, I want that hot dog on that cart. And then he jumps out of the screen. So the entire movie is sort of based around Odie and this bone because you get to the final part of the movie. And, um, I mean, the bone's always involved with Odie. So I'd like to say that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I have a note. Um, yes. I don't. Let's see. Um, something I'd like to point out is there's a scene in a movie where uh, there, I think Garfield buys some food or from some water, and there's bubbles, and every time they popped, it made a meowing noise. I just like to point that out, and I thought that was an odd creative choice. Also, I think <laughs> the lunch lady made a pun about it because mm-hmm. it was definitely like a cat soup. Because the bubbles yeah. also had, like, Garfield's face on it. Like, that was... Uh, yeah, yeah, no. I, also, it, I noticed that, too. It was weird. And it was definitely... Well, because Garfield was also flirting with the lunch lady, too. And didn't yeah, she yeah, also yeah. get flirted with, or at the end of the movie, when the whole uh, dance scene was going yeah. on? She, like, she completely changed. She had... A romantic dance with the um, tricycle guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I love that guy. It's very romantic. Then this I also have another a... note mm-hmm. that I'm not sure. If, I don't know if you got, I don't really remember it. Like, but it just says nose blowing. Like, that's the, it's the bear doing the nose farts. Oh, that's, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, I remember. Um, I thought that was really re- uh, repulsive. Um, mm-hmm. But they now. did acknowledge it because the um, old lady was like, you're disgusting. And he's like, now you get it? Like, 
like he was, yeah. he, was... <laughs> he was going for that yeah well, he, he did succeed so my next note is prop guy is Sean which we did kind of discuss one of the character yeah. models looks like Sean exactly. Lyons um, and he is supersonic speed <laughs> just like Sean Lyons just like Sean Lyons very I fast. do have the cast of a gazelle. So, um, wow, back, back to the topic wow. of Hannah's. You promote positivity on this show. I, um, shut up, Sam. I, um, was wondering why throughout the movie you guys kept saying I looked like him, and then I kind of realized towards the end of the movie, I get it now. You also <laughs> acted like him. Because he was really annoying that? and like no one really liked him, <laughs> and that just kind of reminds me of you, Sean. He wanted okay. his bone back because Odie on. wouldn't give him back the bone. Yeah, okay. Sean's always but like, you have to give me that back. was upset for understandably reasons. He's the prop guy and he's supposed to control all the props, and then Odie's out here taking his oh. bone. And then Odie, with the Odie goes to the real world, and then Sounds like the prop guy. Sounds like something a loser would do. Dude's just trying to do his job. Yeah, Sean, so, I think um, you and the prop guy both have to yeah, Sean, since when do you do your job? I feel like there's a lot of <laughs> tension here. All right. Well, let's just make this a diss on Sean. <laughs> <laughs> diss on Sean. Diss on Sean. I'm not champing. <laughs> I would like to move yeah, on to the Trevor. topic of the yeah. Garfield cast. <laughs> All right. So the next – so once Garfield goes into the real world, Garfield and Odie go into the real world. Odie's character model doesn't really change, but Garfield, instead of walking on his hind legs, he they turned him into an in quotation marks an actual cat, mm-hmm. and he his body is so oddly like shaped. Like, I believe Sam, you said he looked like a frog. Yeah, no, especially from the the still frame that the Netflix showed, he is sitting like a frog, and what they did. It appears that they gave him his two back legs are real cat legs, but then his his front legs are just the are from the comic character design. So it just doesn't really match well, and it's um very disturbing. It looks like they copied the upper half of the character model and pasted on a new lower half. Yeah, frankly, it's um unsettling. And probably they probably could have handled that better, mm-hmm. but I guess. I guess it just made the movie a little bit more memorable. But um, this is one of those one movie where it actually kind of makes sense for there to be like actual live action and CGI animation combined. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, since it's only a ten million dollar budget, and I don't know, they wanted to make it a full CGI, they made it a full CGI. But mm-hmm. um, and it was at this point in the movie where Sean Lyon said. The grass is the only nice thing in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, I think <laughs> I made a very good point. It was the only like pleasing thing to look at in that s- entire movie. And then in that certain scene, it's like grass looked beautiful. Um, Matt, would you like to describe uh, the arc between Odie and the Chihuahuas? Well, you see, throughout the movie... The Chihuahuas like to uh, chase Odie because, you know, they want his bone. And they never really get rid of the Chihuahuas. You know, they're there till the very end. I believe it's a metaphor. So, we'll continue. What do you think it's a metaphor for, Sam? <laughs> metaphor for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what Jacob said. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good metaphor. <laughs> but go on, Matt. Go on, Matt. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, but so, anyways, the uh, Chihuahuas, you know, they just keep chasing Odie the entire movie, and you know, they have a few, few uh, good gags with it. You know, at some point, they use a uh, telephone pole, I believe, to send them up pretty high, or uh, some pole. And you know, it's it's pretty funny, but you know, it's just the same gag over and over again. Though, um, so I would like I to know. make. I would like to make a point. Um, the continuity in this movie is non-existent. So you yeah. mentioned that tel- the Chihuahuas get launched into space from this telephone yeah. pole and crash down to Earth, but they mm-hmm. are fine. 
cut to later, Odie gets kicked off a table in the real world, and he's wounded. So I don't think they really understood what they wanted the real world to actually be, if they wanted it to be the real world or if they just wanted it to still be a cartoon. Yeah, no, they definitely did a little, little tea of mm-hmm. Um It just is another flaw with the movie. Yeah. But it's kind of like, what do you expect, you know? Yeah, it's it's the direct-to-video Garfield gets real. Part of the direct-to-video trilogy of Garfield film. Um, so, in this point of the movie, Garfield and Odie meet, meet these three cats. Uh, Shecky is the main one. Uh, mm-hmm. Waldo is the uh, dumb one, and Sheila is the hot one. Always Wait, was dumb Waldo one. not a dog? Just like Sean. Was Waldo a dog? I thought Waldo might have been a dog. I uh, gonna... Yes, the bigger one was the a dog. Was, was Sheila a dog too, or was Sheila a cat? Uh, Sheila was a cat. So it was two okay. cats, one dog. Okay. Yeah, so these yeah. three characters, you know, Shecky's helping them out, get food and stuff. Waldo and Sheila are just kind of um, there. I, I thought. Something. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Oh, I just said Sheila actually played a little bit of a role. Um, maybe it didn't seem as clear as you might think, but Sheila was a little flirty with Garfield, and uh, Arlene, Garfield's pretty much actual girlfriend, could see that, and she didn't like that. But then uh, it all kind of comes around because Garfield's like, "No, no, you're you're the one I love," and then. It it really strengthens the relationship between Garfield and Arlene. Uh, I think and that was actually Arlene... a, had that been planned. I don't know, but it worked out. But I think Sheila did have first, besides being a pretty kitty. All right. Well, thank you, thank you. You've opened my eyes to the quality of this film. So don't hate on her. Don't hate on her as much. So, so um, we are then. Once Garfield realizes that his um, strip is being canceled after one day without a comic, the, the the newspaper company is looking for a replacement. So they have a contest for um, new comic book, comic strip characters, and this is where our villain of the movie is introduced. They are called Hale and Hardy. Uh, they are a duo of a muscular cat and dog, so they're not really that funny and that is the point of them is that they're not that funny because garfield's like they're not funny they're just used for product placement and that is that is wrong you gotta be funny to be in the newspaper um that's why they're called the funnies exactly um and then once hale and hardy win the contest this sends garfield and Odie on a little bit of a montage trying to get back into the comic book world uh, and they try to run themselves over with a steamroller to do so. But it doesn't work, and they break all their bones. You know, I have a confession to make. Yeah. Uh, from about, like, 20 minutes to, like, half an hour to, like, the last portion of the movie, uh-huh. I, I just kind of put my head down and uh-huh. zoned out and took a nap. Oh, my but, God. But So my, my, my knowledge on the later part is not as... Um, Let's see, as good as yours, probably, or Maddie's. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Me, well, Matt, and Trevor fully watched that movie through and through. Yeah. Yes. Well, I do have to say, the first half of the movie, I was watching on a FaceTime call. So, <laughs> I didn't really get the full experience. Me and Trevor <laughs> sat down and watched it with perfect audio and visual quality. And I thought it was perfect. Pretty funny being with everybody <laughs> in that style. So, um, to get back to talking about Garfield, because that's what we're here. We, we gotta, we gotta move this along. There's still a lot of movie to cover. Garfield then gets the idea to make a um, tunnel contraption, kind of like a concertina, is where he gets the idea from. And Ooh, foreshadow. Yes. Or callback. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> So they, the comic book characters make a tunnel to go through from the comic book world to the real world. But um, Hale and Hardy are kind of like, yo, 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 we can't let Garfield and Odie get back to the comic book world because they'll, uh, they'll replace us. They tie up Garfield, Odie, 
and Shecky in the upstairs of the house that Shecky lives at. And then they proceed to light the building on fire and then wow. leave. So this is this is where I thought the movie was going oh, a it's little got too real. far for a Garfield movie. I know he gets real, but that gets a little too real. Because it's not just like a little tiny like trash can fire. The entire building is engulfed in flame and they are getting cooked alive inside it. it was, I thought it was just a little terrible. I am going to be real with you. I did not know where this movie was going. And then um, they lit a building on fire. So they uh, they caught me off guard. <laughs> they did the unexpected. <laughs> um, so the comic book characters make the machine. And um, they have to decide the three people that are going to go through to save Garfield, Odie, and Shecky. And John... Or... Um, the the little husband guy, the potato, he's an inventor. Since he invented it, he's, of course, going to go through. John Arbuckle raises his hand and says he's going to go through. And then Arlene raises her hand and says she's going to go through. But Maddie B, what happens after that scene, after Arlene raises her hand? Well, you see, the bear decides that they need someone with a strong back, so he'll go instead. Why can't they all go? <laughs> because they can only send they three. They can only be three. But then the potato man proceeds to say the line, let's go, men, as they charge <laughs> into the fire-burning house. <laughs> and then the bear is completely useless the entire time. The bear tries to run through the wall and then um, says... Ouch, looks like we're not in the comic book world anymore. And then they try to crawl through a small hole and the bear has trouble. So in the end, it you know would be better if Arlene was with them because she is a small cat and probably could have been more assistance than a big dumb bear. Fucking but... man. <laughs> Let's go, man. That's well, their problem. They didn't have enough women on the team. So far. <laughs> So far, I'm getting themes of misogyny, bondage, big boobies. Um, arson? Arson, I mean, who hasn't thought about, like, an arson fantasy, you know? I'm just saying. So, this is sounding a lot like a porno. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just going to go back to that. It, it, it sounded a I lot mean, like a porno. Oh. What kind of porno has arson? The uh, ones I watch. A hot though. one? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, was <laughs> oh, oh, that, that was a good one. Who let you <laughs> off the leash? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the uh, three men uh, saved the day. There's a mine cart involved, and uh, hilarity ensues, yada, yada, yada. They get out of the fire, they go back to the comic book world, and they have a big dance party. Garfield confesses his love to Arlene. Um, and then the Chihuahuas apparently snuck through the portal and continued the mayhem. And that is Garfield Gets Real. Oh my gosh, what an... <laughs> what a roller coaster. What is adventure. there anything, anything anybody wants to say? Well, I think we should talk about what we liked about the movie. Mm-hmm. I'll go first. Yes. I think... I think Garfield, the portrayal of Garfield, was some pretty Garfield stuff, and I think that, and I think that was probably one of the nicest aspects of the entire film. And I think the guy, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, who portrays him, and then uh, later goes Frank on to Welker. portray him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Frank, Frank Welker. Welker. He really captures the essence of Garfield because he just he hates Mondays and he just wants to be a cat. And relax, just mm-hmm. like everyone else. And I think uh, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Sean, do you have anything? Um, um, I did like how in the beginning, um, it really was like a scene, like 
at John's house. It was a scene for Garfield when the movie first started. He woke up and he um he got hit on the head and he was like, Wow, I hate Mondays and I was like, Oh, seems free tame and then we get to the end of the movie, I'm like, Well, I don't know what I just watched. But I liked it from start to finish. I thought it was really, really funny in a bad and good way. I was going to say, that's that's the thing I liked about this movie. It was funny. Whether intentional or not. <laughs> I was caught laughing multiple times due to um, the absurdity of the film. Sam, what you scrubbing over there? Oh, oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all good. Um, but um, the absurdity of the film, the poor quality of the film, and occasionally there was a good joke here or there, you know? Don't forget the grass. The grass. That the was, grass was... Oh, can't forget the grass. The grass was mm. nice. Grass was That's why fine. Sean didn't say anything. Um, but, I did. Yeah, no, it was funny. Matt, anything else you want to say? You know, the only thing I really liked about the movie was Garfield himself. I feel like his character really carried the movie. You know, he was funny. And he was kind of he was kind of deep because, you know, he was having his existential crisis. And I feel like a lot of people could relate to that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've all had an existential crisis. Yeah. So, um, and then, Jacob, you can just go f*** yourself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. So do I. Uh, would you guys? <laughs> would you guys watch another one of these movies? Of course. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to. So I don't think we really have a choice. We are gonna have to because <laughs> there are two more in this trilogy with Garfield's Fun Fest and Garfield's Pet Force. So um. And then don't forget the Garfield show. The Garfield show. Watch yeah. The entirety of. Yes, and then the classic two films, Garfield 2004 and Garfield The Tale of Two Kitties. All right, so that sums up, that was Garfield Gets Real. I do believe it's time to move on to our next segment, which is the dramatic reading with Jacob Penske. Ah, this is my favorite part of every episode. I I love it. Today, we're going to go to October 19th, 2018 for this uh, movie-related comic. All right. The scene opens in John's living room, where John, Odie, Garfield, and Liz are all seated on the couch in front of the TV. Everybody ready for movie night? Says John. Tonight's film, Poca Poca Poca, the untold, untold history of the accordion. And a one, and a two. John is alone on the couch with a blank expression on his face. His whole family has left them after they found out that the movie was about accordions. The end. Wow. <laughs> well, riveting. Uh, you know, I can I can really relate to John in this in this scene. This is um, this hits a little too close to home. I mean, I can relate to his family because who likes the accordion? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I wonder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, anything involving an accordion is not worth watching, listening to, consuming. So you really, like, you really imagine playing Garfield, the like, accordion. Oh. Yeah, dude. Imagine. I, you really feel for you. Don't really feel for John. So <laughs> you don't feel for John, but you feel for his family because they have to sit and even yeah. think about it's watching like, that. They they just had to hear that title, like polka polka kangaroo. Polka. Yeah, I think it was polka polka polka, <laughs> the untold story of the accordion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just um, that, that hurts. That hurts the ears. <laughs> and that would be such a Garfield thing to do to just lean. Mm-hmm. Not well, it wasn't it, just Garfield. It was a, right, it was right, his right. entire family that left. You know, yeah. Garfield, Odie, and so, Liz. So I would like to point out, we have mentioned that John never gets the girl, but for the past couple of years in the Garfield comics, John has been officially dating Liz. Wow. I was just going to ask, are they married? 
so the only time that John and Liz have married was in Garfield's Tale of Two Kitties. But um, in Dang. the comics, they are still unmarried. But right now, they are dating. So there is that. I thought I thought he proposed. Did he propose in the first Garfield? Um, no. At the beginning of Tale of Two Kitties is when he's um trying to he's talking to Garfield and he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna propose to Liz." And Garfield's Whoa, like, spoilers. "John, this is a girl." This is a girl. Oh, that was Tale of Two Kitties. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, because the first one is how John and Liz be- begin dating. Um, you can't wait so, to yeah. watch that. Yeah, I know. We're we're gonna wait till we finish the direct to video trilogy though. So, right. Yeah, it'll no. be it'll be a it'll be a big special when we discuss those two films. Don't you worry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do believe that brings us on to the next segment. Uh, fun fact of the day with Maddie B. All right. So in the scene where. Garfield and Odie go to the contest. There is a poster of Garfield and Odie, and in the background, it shows a comic strip. So I decided to do a little digging and find out what this comic strip is. Now, I couldn't find any good origins of it. One theory is it was made while Jim Davis was very depressed, and he sent it to the producers. But I could not not find any evidence of that. And the thing that's special about this comic strip is is uh, it's quite vulgar for a uh, Gar- Garfield strip. So the scene starts off. John is about to go on a date, and he's showing some ties to Garfield. Garfield, help me choose a tie for my date tonight. Should I go with this bunny tie that says I'm cuddly, the golfer's tie that says I'm athletic, or the animal print tie that says I'm wild? How about this one? The clip on one that screams, I'm a dork. What's going on, you f***ing cat? I haven't gotten slayed in six years. I need this date to go well, or else I will come back here and rip you up the ass. That's right. I will f*** my own cat if I can't get any action tonight. One way or another, I'm going to get myself some pussy. I'm a mushroom cloud laying motherfucker, motherfucker. Now, which f***ing tie should I wear on my date tonight? Um. <laughs> you know, also, to point out, for any non-believers, if you look at the scene, and I'll include the timestamp in the description, it, you can tell that it does say mother f***er in, uh, on the comic strip. So, there's <laughs> that. Um, but you mentioned that Jim Davis might have been depressed. Uh, an example of how you know how Jim Davis is depressed Garfield is bored with being Garfield and Jim Davis has stated in the movie and Jim Davis has stated multiple times that he is kind of getting sick of Garfield as the years go on because you know 40 years of dealing with this one comic book character but um and I feel like Garfield's uh re- dep- er, existential crisis is kind of Jim Davis's own existential crisis because we didn't mention that Jim Davis actually wrote Garfield Gets Real. Uh, <laughs> so I think it was a lot of his own yeah. self-projections in the character. Wow. So it was almost like he was venting with this movie. Yes. I guess that's its special purpose. Mm-hmm. It might not be good, but it did serve Jim Davis, our Lord and Savior, creator of Garfield. Well, I feel like if Jim Davis didn't like Garfield, he wouldn't really want to make a movie about him. <laughs> but maybe he Jim Davis in. also likes money. Yeah, it's true. That is I mean, true. he could he could literally make the biggest pile of crap, but if it's Garfield's on it, then he gets a big fat paycheck. And you know yeah. how we know that People works? People are going to watch Garfield. There yeah, are three direct-to-video really movies, yeah, and then two live-action the movies. Hey, don't you dare diss the Bill Murray movies. Don't did he, did he write those? No, he didn't. He yeah. just... um, all right. Is That's there uh, anything else you want to say about those comics, Matt? Uh, no, there's not. Okay. Uh, and that brings it to my segment, uh, Garf in the World. So um, today's Garfield cameo is not an official Garfield cameo. Um, 
Have uh, any of you guys heard of this small little show called The Simpsons? No. Um, uh, what is, is that? Is that the one with Peter Griffin? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, with over 30 years of Simpsons content, uh, I was bound to mention Garfield once or twice. And um, in season 28, episode 15, The Cad and the Hat, Bart Simpson is watching a TV show. So it's a TV show in a TV show. And that TV wow. show is called Itchy and Scratchy. And for those who don't know, it's a parody of Tom and Jerry. But the joke is that it's um, extremely violent, making fun of how violent television, television is. Um, and in this episode... The episode of Itchy and Scratchy that Bart is watching is called the Garfield Assassination. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, in this, uh, Itchy, the mouse, dresses up as Garfield and asks Scratchy, the cat, if he would like any lasagna. And Scratchy's like, boy, would I? And so as he's eating the lasagna, Itchy takes off the Garfield costume and reveals that the lasagna was a bomb and uh, Scratchy explodes. But... um. I just thought it was funny enough the the title the Garfield assassination. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's um, that's quite the title, man. <laughs> uh, so there it is. That's that's my Garf cameo. All right. Uh, which brings us on thing. to the last segment. What would Garf do with Sean Lyons? Sean. Sean's Sean, microphone you... is muted. <laughs> is Sean gone? Oh no, did Sean go to sleep? <laughs> Sean! I think Sean fell asleep. Sean went Sean. to sleep. <laughs> Sean! No, bro, there's no way. There's no way he's actually asleep. Come on, Sean! Sean. Oh my god. Okay, so Sean muted his microphone however long ago. Oh my god. John's asleep on the podcast. Wait a minute. He's recording the call. Yeah, he's recording. <laughs> no. So it's, never, it's not going to stop until he wakes up? Uh, no, wait. Are you back? He's awake. His mic on muted. John. 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 <laughs> John, you good? Where, where is he? I don't know. He <laughs> unmuted his microphone, so he's awake, I believe, but he's not saying anything. Something's <laughs> going on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can yeah. You now. yeah, I had some technical problems with my headset. <laughs> okay. um, a little behind uh, the scenes, for those asleep. who don't know, we uh, record the GarfCast through Skype calls. Not and it also, so, one in the morning, so I couldn't really see. <laughs> um, um but yeah, sorry. Garfield gets yeah. real. Yeah. What What would Garf do with Sean? <laughs> like, yeah, we're, right. we're, we're, we're at a point. Thank you, Sam. All right. What would Garfield do? Since we're talking about Garfield getting real in the real world, I wanted to just make it very simple and talk about other than what the um, that movie did. What would Garfield really be like? Would he be a celebrity, or would he just be John, him, and Odie in their own little world, like normal in the real world? So, what would Garfield do in the real world? Besides, you know, the movie aspect that we've already seen, what would, how would it play out? Um, well, for starters, he would be dead. Um, because if one, his age of 40 human years didn't get him the amount of lasagna and other foods that this cat has devoured would probably have killed him. You know, I gotta say in the movie, I'm very disappointed that instead of liking lasagna, he likes hot dogs. I mean, you can like, you know, more than one food. Yeah, like his his favorite food is lasagna, but he does like every type of food. Yeah, he's a foodie. Yeah, if he, if he only ate lasagna, he would eventually not like lasagna. So we can't have that. Yeah, but it's Garfield. It's got to be lasagna. Well, Jim Davis did write this. So it was, you know, maybe once again, Jim Davis is projecting 
uh, his inner feelings and how much Jim Davis loves Wiener. Uh, Jim, if you can hear us right now, if you ever do hear us, uh, why don't you come on the yeah, show? Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> we'd, love to, we'd love to hear your thoughts about Garfield Gets Real on the show. Yeah, we do a film at... Or anything, Garfield. Or anything else, really. Yeah. If you want to talk about how much you love Snoopy, we can talk about that. But you can, you know, you can come on the show. There's always a seat welcome here at the Garfcast for you. But um, back to the question: What would Garfield do if he got real? <laughs> uh, um, Jake, <laughs> I can I can take this. Um, so, you know, in the comics. Garfield doesn't actually talk. He just his thoughts are portrayed in words, and but John can't actually hear them. Now in other movies or TV shows, that kind of changes. But as far as the comics go, Garfield doesn't talk. So in real life, if Garfield's not able to talk, which he won't be because he's a cat, um, he's just a normal cat. He'd be pretty fat. He'd be orange. He'd be dead. His lifespan would be from like whenever nineteen seventy to maybe like twenty years, nineteen ninety. So he he's been dead for a good thirty years. So uh, he lived a normal cat life. He ate a lot of food. Uh, I think uh, in terms of cat lives, he definitely was uh, an upper class cat, and he might be in hell. He might be in heaven. There's no way to know. This also brings up another question. Where would John be, even without Odie or Garfield? Where would Probably he... get another cat. <laughs> Garfield 2. So do you think it would just be a cycle until John one, one, I mean, one like, day just dies? You know, John has when, the, your, when, your your pets die, Garfield. when your pets die, you usually get another pet. Like, so... I don't think I don't think John would be any different, especially if this is the real world. Mm-hmm. True, um, but I do believe if John did exist in this world, John Arbuckle would probably be the Jim Davis of our world. If John Arbuckle was the one writing, you know, Garfield, because to be fair, the original cat yeah. that inspired Jim Davis is dead. Jim Davis is, you know, the John Arbuckle of our world. John, Ar- if John Arbuckle got real, just be ch- Jim just Davis. Be yeah, yeah. But um, anybody else have anything? Um, I'm good. Uh, that's okay. what Garfield would do. Mhm. Well, I do believe that this wraps up this week's episode of the Garfcast. Be sure to visit. Anchor.fm to learn how you yourself can make your very own podcast. Thank you once again for sponsoring the video, Anchor. And um, we will see you next week on the GarfCast. Until then, stay safe. Appeals.